<laughs> there, and it's now being recorded. So, I will advance the slides. So, I'm going to speak for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, and if you ask any questions along the way at the end, my goal is to give you an overview of the project. How many people here have not heard of Big Blue Button? Okay, cool. The uh, quick overview, uh, where we are with the project, what our roadmap is, and answer any questions that you have. So when we look, we look at online learning, and Big Blue Button focuses on one market, that is online learning. There are about 4,500 degree grading institutions in North America, about 25,000 post-secondary schools, and 90% of them are moving towards uh, having some part of their educational offering online. So uh, there's a huge social benefit to this as well, just like Moodle. So many places in the world use Moodle and they benefit from it. When we look at the kind of whole market for educational software, there are about 571 LMSs out there. Moodle is the top, top open source web uh, LMS. When we look at the web conferencing systems out there, there are at least 145 options. So when you look at web conferencing, you could ask, well, where are the open source solutions? And that's where Big Blue Button is. We are an open source web conferencing system for online learning. Our belief is that every student with a web browser should have access to a high quality online learning experience, and we intend to make that happen with Big Blue Button. Big Blue Button actually started not far from here, Carleton University in 2007. Um, Stephen Muhi is here in the room. Yes, so Steve uh, was one of the original instructors in the technology information management program that used Big Blue Button, and the student in that program, Richard Alam, created it back in 2007. And you can tell it's a university because they still have chalkboards. There are three use cases that we focus on. So one-to-one, -one, which is virtual office hours, sorry, yeah, virtual office hours, online tutoring, student coaching, small group collaboration, which is this, one, uh, actually this is more one-to-many, but small group collaboration where if you have a number of people in a session, you want to share webcams and collaborate. And the traditional teaching, which is one-to-many. We say in the project, the open source project, we recommend for people with about 50 users or less. That's not hard-coded. There are many times that uh, we see people about used for much larger sessions. But we uh, quote a number just so that we always exceed people's expectation and because we're Canadian and we're conservative. But not. <laughs> <laughs> so Big Blue Button provides you the core uh, synchronous capabilities you'd expect. Desktop sharing, audio, chat, video, polling, and slides. It's very collaborative. So here's an example of a screenshot where we have four webcams being shared at the same time. Here's an example of where eight webcams are being shared. And the recording is available as well. So Big Blue Button, when you do a session, just like the session today, all the, cat, all the aspects are being recorded and they're later on available for playback. For the techies out there, there's some really cool open source projects that we build upon. And The open source projects uh, are, some of them are really phenomenal, like really phenomenal. And I do full screen, can't remember how to do it on. Okay, no worries. Oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, in terms of growth, let me talk about growth. So we've had lots of good organic growth. We in Facebook, we have about 45, 4,400 likes. Twitter is about 2,600 followers. And on GitHub, which is the main way that you would uh, measure the success of any open source project, we have a lot of forks. But I'd like to say this is all organic, no special preservatives. We didn't pay anybody to like us. It's just the natural growth. In terms of our developer mailing list, I remember the day when there was three people on the mailing list. And there was like one post in a few weeks. That was the beginning. But now we have over 2,000 members. It's very active. There's a worldwide community of developers that work on and contribute to Big Blue Button. There's a worldwide community that localizes into many languages. So TransFX, which is a really good site, all of our language strings are up there. Anybody in the world can come, provide a localization, update the existing strings, 
And what we do is we periodically pull from trans effects and pull all those strings, all those language strings into Big Blue Button. So in the lower right hand corner, if you look at the menu that shows what the localizations are, those are all provided by our community. We get together every six months for a developer summit where we sprint for a week with developers around the world. Uh, the developer summit, the fifth developer summit was in Porto Alegre, uh, which was last fall. And that was uh, because in, in Brazil, there's actually a very strong contingent of people who have been using BigBlueButton. There's a project called MCONF, which uses BigBlueButton. And they were placed at a lot of universities' proprietary software uh, using the BigBlueButton. And they've contributed to it over the years. Really great guys. And a bit earlier, uh, there was the fourth summit, which we had in Ottawa. There are six core committers in Big Blue Button. A lot of them have telecommunication background as well, which we know what it means to ship a real-time system. In terms of adoption, there's a lot of great adoption in the Moodle community. This one I always go back to, Darren Ricketts. There's a University of West Scotland. It's got a video online on their use of Big Blue Button. Uh, US, uh, University of South Alabama. I just did some Googling for sites that I know have Big Blue Button publicly. This is a quote that we were given by uh, another uh, university. This is actually an online university. Uh, the head of IT, Marianne DeVille, I'll read it out. We are a national university college division and are very happy with our change to Big Blue Button. With our previous solution, we had over 50 support tickets a month. After switching to Big Blue Button, that number dropped six to seven tickets per month. So regardless of what we would market about Big Blue Button, that is what we shoot for. That is adoption. That means that people are using it, it's fading into the background, and our goal of making a web conferencing system that enables a remote student to have a high quality learning experience, we're getting closer to it with that. And as Martin suggested, or, or he spoke as well, the Moodle Cloud. So we've been very close to Moodle over the years. It's super awesome for us to be able to complement and add value to Moodle in the, in the Moodle Cloud offering. Probably the defining win for us in the last uh, year or two is when you see another project built on top of yours. So the US Department of Defense announced in February that they are building, they have built a new system to replace a proprietary web conferencing system. They call it Defense Collaboration Systems. And they expect to save at least $12 million a year using this new system. And this new system is built on Big Blue Button. So I know quite a lot about it. I can't tell you everything. I'm just kidding. Uh, they're very, it's, it's, it was an, an awesome project, but it speaks so loud because they're running thousands of simultaneous users across hundreds of sessions, and it's built on Big Blue Button. So let's talk about Moodle for the win. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Jesus does the Moodle integration. The Big Blue Button integration is probably like 13th most downloaded plugin in the last 12 months. There's been over 130,000 downloads of it. It supports Moodle 1.9 all the way up. So we, when Moodle comes out with a new version, we work on making sure it does a really good job. This is a graph in terms of the, the, uh, the people, I think, it's, it's, it's false, but I think it's people downloading it from within side of the big button, sorry, inside of Moodle. And it's up to over uh, almost 3,000 now. That's, our, that's sites that have gone and installed it from the Moodle.org uh, website. So I'll give you a couple of visuals of it. This is all on Moodle Cloud. So if you want to use the latest integration of Big Blue Button, just sign up for an account on Moodle Cloud, and you'll see this. So it's a plugin. It's an activity uh, link. When it comes up, it's really got a very simple interface at the beginning. Do you What's your name? Do you want to open up a window? And we also have some notifications that can be sent out to users in, this, in the course that, hey, a new um, Big Blue Button activity link is now, uh, is it the session, Jesus, that's ready? Or is it it's installed? So the send notifications. And what happens when they check that box? When you go into more details, you can give a description that appears in the welcome message. You can um, have the students require that they cannot enter the session until the instructor enters. 
So that would be like if you have virtual office hours, they'd simply queue up inside of Moodle, and as soon as you start the session, then it would come in. You can be very fine-grained on the roles. So even if you define custom roles inside of Moodle, you can map those roles into a viewer or a moderator. These are the two roles in the Moodle button. You can schedule it so it appears in the Moodle calendar. And you can record it as well. And Jesus added a capability which was asked for a number of people, could I create a default presentation? So you can actually upload a slide deck to the big blue button link here, the activity link, and then when the session is created, that slide presentation will become the default presentation. And this is what it looks like inside of the course. So there's a description that's visible. When you click on it, if you're no one else is in the session, you will actually see that you can just join it. If you are a moderator and a session's active, you'll see how many users are in the session, how long it's been active for, and then you can also edit it as well, in addition to joining it. And the recordings all appear inside the, the, the activity link in this sort of intermediate page. This will actually, it actually removes the need for the second resource plugin that was in the previous version it's called Big Blue Button, or called Recordings DN, which kind of gathered together all the recordings from all sessions. There's only really Moodle 2.9, you only need one integration of the Big Blue Button DN. The recordings will be available to students when they click on the link, and the instructors will be able to publish and publish and delete the recordings as well. So in all of our integrations, Moodle is the kind of premier integration. We have put a lot of effort into it, and it has the most capabilities of any LMS integration. For us as an open source project, it really is a mark of success and other people build on top of us. We have a very simple API. This is again more for the techies in there. Whether it's the Big Blue integration, the WordPress integration, or others, they all use these same API calls. And we have an integration with a number of LMSs. It's really important to us because we focus on one market, online learning. So by having a deep integration with the LMSs, it makes Big Blue Button more attractive than, say, a proprietary web conferencing system that really doesn't care about your LMS. They just want you to go log into their site, and the students don't really come in, and they have two accounts. And No, we like very deep integrations. Our goal is to fade in the background while teachers get on with the job of teaching and students get on with the job of learning. So let me talk about Roadmap. We are currently on what we call our 1.0 release. Again, this is the conservatism in Canada after that. We've actually had 14 releases in the last seven years. Big Blue Button has had very large production deployments. But there's some features that we still want to have. And again, the philosophy of the project was always under promise and over deliver. And we know a lot of people tried the product out but thinking this is open source or blah, blah, blah. And they realize, wow, this thing is, is better than I expected. That's the, that's the experience that we were looking for. So we do have what we call our 1.0 beta. Uh, we have delivered a beta on October 5th. We're now going through our beta cycle where we just basically run it in production. We fix any bugs we find. We listen to our community. We watch to see if anybody has problems. And when we get to zero bugs, we then do a release candidate. And for us, a release candidate is you can only change the label when make a release. And we're getting the last beta cycle. We have a lot of, uh, we had quite expensive beta cycles for the last release. Again, our philosophy is there's no upside for us to release something early and call it 4.5 and try it out. No, we'll just release 4.5.1 a little bit later. Don't worry about it. No, we have, we have had to do very little patches to past releases because we spent so much time testing it. And again, I think this philosophy paid out when the Department of Defense tried us out and realized this is actually pretty solid. There was another open, there was another open source web conferencing system called Open Meetings. And I remember one comment that stuck in my mind years ago. It, the, the, other, the other project had a lot more features, but it was very easy to find bugs. Big Blue Button had fewer features, but it was very hard to find bugs. And again, I think that was the right strategy. So let me talk about the things that are now in beta, in the beta release that we have added to, in this case, really try to increase interactivity with the instructor and the students. Polling module, approved video doc, mode icons, and something I'll talk about, the Puppet Browser support. The polling module, I'm very happy with how this landed in the core, because we really wanted to make it simple, and let me walk you through how we did it. The observation we had was that most of the interaction that goes on during a session, and during an online class, is structured around the presentation, the slides. So the thinking previous to this was, well, how do we 
and people will start to add polls. Oh, let's create a dialog box. I'll type in the question for the poll. I'll type in their answers. They'll save them. Maybe there's some way to download them, upload them. It just didn't feel like the glue button. So when we said, well, you know what? I think everything we need is actually going to be in the slides. And what if we just said to the instructors, put as many poll type questions in the slides, and we'll make it easy for you to initiate those polls in a the session. Then that led us to this design. So here's an example of a, a poll. Uh, red, black, blue, what's, what color is not on the rainbow? Well, we have a polling button. You can see it here. And I'll do a poll with the online audience. Uh, there is actually, if I look at it, we have about, we have about 30, about 25 people online in the online session. So I will try a poll in a few moments. It's changing. Okay. So the instructors can now do uh, basically quick polls, which are yes, no, true, false, A, B, A, B, C. You don't need a presentation to do a poll. This presentation can probably provide the context. But I could basically say right now, uh, what do people think about Big Blue Button? Um, and let's try a poll with the audience. So I'm going to do a poll, and I'm going to, I'm going to ask the people online, you'll be able to respond. Let's see. Do you think that we're headed in the right direction with the design of Big Blue Button? Okay. So now I, as the instructor, can see the poll results come back live. I have two choices. I can publish them, or I can close it. If I publish them, they'll go right into the slides. So I can wait. Um, well, one thing I've noticed in the past is when you see that there's 24 people, you may think, well, oh my gosh, which students are not responding? They're not at their keyboard. You know, I want to know who's not clicked the poll. Polling is meant to be anonymous. <laughs> if you want to know who's not at your keyboard, ask them, like, can everybody raise their hand? Which, you know, they'll tell you the person's hand doesn't raise. A crazy hand is not anonymous. So let me publish this. So, and I'm going to go to a presentation layout. So the publishing here, now, in the presentation, this actually becomes whiteboard marks. I can annotate it, I can highlight it, I can go over it, and I can actually clear it and ask other questions as well. So I was able to do a poll by one, by basically making one choice and then publishing it. Okay. So this is a couple screenshots of what you saw a moment ago. The instructor sees the polls. This is what students saw remotely. The choices for the poll appear under the presentation. And this goes back to the presentation provides the context for the discussion. And in the presentation, if you have poll-like questions, you don't need to put a dialog box up to obscure the presentation. You just need to ask users what their response is. Again, the polls are published. And then they can become part of the recordings as well. The last thing we, uh, one thing we worked on hard was how can we make it really, really easy and so we actually have the text for the slides in memory because we make it available to screen readers for students who are visually impaired. And we can detect whether it looks like there's a series of choices in the slides. And if we do that, we can provide a button to make it really easy for the instructor. So we can scan for true false. We can scan for yes, no. And that would be basically one button. And that button would appear right here next to the slide. So here I would have polling. But if I actually had a slide with yes, no in it, that one button would be available to me. So as the instructor, I could, for example, do a review at the end of the session. And all I'm doing is going next slide, clicking the poll, next slide, clicking the poll, and rapidly engage students to see how much they retain. And then use their results as part of the learning process. Is that language uh, context sensitive? A little bit. I think we had to hard code some stuff. But uh, I think it's mostly English, French now. We have to hard code a bit of French. Uh, at some point, we're going to make sure, actually, let me back up. The choices A, B, C, and D are language agnostic. The true, false, yes, no, I think there's a little bit of uh, work left to be done to just make that language agnostic as well. And we also added custom polls, where you can, if you're just simply discussing with students and say, let's do a quick straw poll, then and if there's no slide available for you, just type in the choices, and then students will see that. You can see it again here under the slide. And they can see it appear in the results. Ah, oh, okay, I think some examples. All right, so I'm going to do a poll here. This is my slide. You notice there's a button here, ABCD. I'm just going to press one button, and now I'll ask the online audience uh, what do you think the right answer is. So, which is the state that's uh, the most northern state? 
And I can say, okay, I'll publish. And it turns out it's Alaska, students are doing well. There's one student who's still not sure, but hopefully this helped clarify it for them afterwards. If we built into item 97 will be mean by the date. Is that what, if I had a decrease in 2.9, is that what? So the, the new integration is one thing, and the big loop server is another. If you go on Google Cloud, you actually have all the polling. Okay. So again, as an open source project, we don't release something until it's done, but a lot of times we know that companies will run this in production because the betas have gone through so much testing before we get through beta. So if you download it, if you went to our website right now, I'll put a link at the end. There's information there about how to set up a big blue button, the latest version of the beta. Okay. We have emojis as well. So we're now, students are now able to provide feedback in terms of like, are you happy or sad? Do you think this is good? So again, I'll ask the online audience if you want to uh, provide some feedback uh, using the emoji icons. And you can give us some sense of what you think of the presentation so far, what you think of the Moodle mood. And for the instructor, those would appear uh, on the left. So two happy faces so far. Okay. I'm just going to switch back to a presentation layout. So let me talk about briefly. Um, does anybody, who, know, who has heard of the Puffin browser? Cool. So Puffin is a company, it's actually Cloud Mosa. They have a browser which has, um, which renders all the content on the cloud and it streams it back to the, the mobile device. So for this session, I've actually been running it on my iPad and it's actually, uh, I've been listening to it as well. I was using it to test the audio up there. So the, the latest version of the Puffin web browser actually allows you to broadcast your webcam and microphone as well. So Big Blue Button can't tell, it's just running in a Chrome environment in the latest version of Flash, but it's actually streamed and it's amazingly fast. So you can use the free version and there's a $4.99 Pro version, which has no ads. So for five bucks, if students want to participate in the Big Blue Button session, they can do it with the top of the browser. And we are working on a mobile client as well, but I was very happy to see they just released this like on the 20th. This is version 4.6 of the Puffin browser that enables the user to broadcast their webcam and microphone. Okay. Now actually, I'll actually do it here. I broadcast my so here we are. Okay. It's uh there's a bit more uh mm -hmm path for the video and audio, but hey, it's actually very impressive. We updated the video doc. I showed a couple screenshots of it earlier. Let's go through those. So let me talk about future plans. And these are in somewhat order. The HTML5 client is something we've been working on for quite a while. We want to make sure that if you're on an Android device, you have the ability to come into Bigwood Button remotely with no flash. And I found this on Android because Android supports WebRTC audio and video, the web real-time communication, um, which means you can have really good quality audio and video from uh, an Android device. iOS, mm, they don't allow you to install a different browser. Even if you install Chrome, it's just a facade over the Safari rendering engine. So Chrome, Apple will want you to write um, a native client, and that's what we intend to do. But our focus for mobile really is the HTML5 client. We can see on the Flash side, as we add more capabilities to it, it may eventually eclipse the, the web client, the Flash-based client. Closed captioning, breakout rooms, faster desktop sharing using WebRTC, full screen mode, shared whiteboard, synchronized video playback, and shared notes. These are the things. Up the, the top three are the ones I hear about the most. I was just at the uh, Orlando last week at the Online Learning Consortium, and breakout rooms was something that I heard a lot. And it's, uh, being worked on now, and it's kind of the last big collaborative capability. Yes? Uh, what about accessibility? Yeah, so we have an external company audit Big Blue Button for each release and put a statement out in terms of the accessibility. So we have made sure that we work with JAWS, the screen reader, for students who are visually impaired, and we are now working on closed captioning. I have a few screenshots of what it looks like. So our goal is that we will have very good support for accessibility. We have half of it right now, with screen readers, and we're working on the closed captioning. What about keyboard accessibility? I'm not sure what you mean. 
um, well, just being able to do things in Big Blue Button using strictly a keyboard without a mouse. Um, yep, so there's some shortcut keys that we built in. So in the right-hand corner, there's shortcuts. So there's a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts slide to navigate through it. Thank you. Yeah, it's really important to us. If any university or college that uh, uses Big Blue Button and has feedback and accessibility of it, please call me, email me, let me know. In terms of the mobile, so this is kind of our plan for the HTML5 client. We cannot do everything in a first release uh, for mobile clients. And this is, again, sort of shows the three platforms. There's the web client, which is Flash-based, and Flash is awesome. I can only say good things about Adobe. They do a great job of supporting it. And it's running here. And in many cases, you know, we as developers would say, oh, we don't want to do Flash. The students do not care. They just want to go in and do their course. They want to click a link, have a load, the audio is good, they can see the teacher, they can follow the slides, polling, they do not care. But for, in terms of uh, future roadmap, we care a lot and we're working very hard on the HTML5 client. There's also some work on the mobile client and the native iOS client as well. But this is kind of a hierarchy of priorities. In terms of the HTML5 client, you can go right now to our demo server, demo.biglubutton.org, with an Android client, and you'll be able to run the HTML5 client. This is a screenshot of what it looks like. On, uh, so we're, we're enabling a student. So the use case for the first version is a student is on public transportation. They would like to be able to participate in the session. They don't have access to their desktop. They just bring up their mobile device, join the session, make the slides full screen. They can hear what the teacher's doing. They can see the mouse moving around. They can interact with polls. Is that in the beta? So this isn't part of the 1.0 beta. This is a parallel development but it's actually uh, available in, on, our, on our demo site. And the instructions on how to install the mobile client are there. So the mobile client isn't finished yet. We still have to do the desktop sharing. So as a student, we do not want the student to be saying, I cannot see what you're sharing with the instructor. So the instructor can share slides, they can see everything on the slides. What we're working on is the instructor shares his or her desktop, that must come to the mobile client as well. So that part's not done yet which is why we don't call it a beta release or whatever. We'll call it call it a developer release. But we've been working on this a long time, and we've had a lot of full-time people uh, working on it. I have to give a shout out to the Ontario Centers of Excellence. The Big Blue Button Project got a grant for $200,000 that paid two years of students at Seneca College, which is a center for development of open source technologies in Toronto, to continue to work on us. So we've hired some of those developers over time. And a lot of that was on the HTML5 client. Here's an example of running in portrait mode. And here's an example of running in full screen. Again, the use case is a student wants to be able to participate in a session. So for us, view presentation, desktop sharing, two-way chat, two-way audio, uh, chat, or the polling and emoji icons are all there right now. And I'll, I have an, a Nexus 5, so I can show you if anybody wants to see later on. Then after that, we'll add more presentation controls. Then we'll add two-way video, then we'll add moderator controls. And what you can see happening is that we're slowly iterating towards implementing all the functionality in the web client. The last slide I have is there's a wealth of documentation out there on Big Blue Button. How to install it, how the architecture is built, frequently asked questions, how to integrate it with other systems, lots of good information. And we keep this updated quite a lot. And at this point, I would love to answer any questions you have about our project. Yes? Is there editing on the recording? So there is sort of pseudo editing live where I have the ability to start and stop the, uh, put start and stop markers in the live session that will later on be used to create the playback file. So I could, we could break for two minutes, I could stop the recording, two minutes later I could start it again, 10 minutes later, I could stop it, and the recording will only be, the, the playback will only be those segments of the start-stop markers. We don't have anything yet to edit it. Um, it's one of the things that we'd like to do. Yes? So we use an open source project called Popcorn, which does a synchronized playback of audio and video. So it's not a specific format that you can download, but it's the video, the, the my webcams and desktop sharing, the audio is our video. The slides are presented as images. All my whiteboard marks are presented as SVG, and the HTML5 uh, is used to present the chat. And it's all synchronized as it's playback. 
Um, are you planning on releasing a new virtual machine for uh, Big Blue Button? Because the last one I found was 0.81. Yes, so I do all the packaging for Big Blue Button. And we thought about doing another virtual machine, but it got it's going to be a lot easier to install Big Blue Button. And the instructions are not that long. Anybody who's competent can probably get Big Blue Button up and running in 30 minutes or less. And if you can't, we'll give you your money back. <laughs> But the uh, it, it's so easy now to just download a bare Ubuntu 14.04 virtual machine and just run the instructions. Uh, when do you expect to see uh, RC come out? It's a good question. Mm, Roughly. We hope soon. It depends on if there's any bugs, and we are prepared to basically spend however many weeks or months there are fixing bugs. So. The motto for our project is always we release on quality, not dates. We've been asked so many times in the past, what's your release date? And we never have a release date. We only, I only look at the quality when the bugs list is zero. And the last release of Big Blue Button, we spent five and a half months beta testing. I mean, we tested this thing with an issue its life. The previous release spent about four and a half months beta testing. So we're about uh, a month into our beta test right now. and. We put so much effort into stabilizing the product, the theory is that the next release will always be faster because we're not patching the previous release. But I hope soon. But you can see you can see the progress by just looking at the open bugs on GitHub. And when that goes list goes to zero, you know we're getting close to release candidate. But I can share with you that uh, this is a being running production. This is running the beta version. That's how I was able to do the polls. Okay, so I, I, I maybe I'm using an older version of it. Um, but I do math tutorials, and so I was really happy when, for example, to draw triangles, I just put this on a whiteboard. Are you going to have something like equation editor? It, it, I would have, I should have listed as one of the items. It is on our roadmap. If you go to our document, there's a roadmap document up there. It's not a higher priority one. Yes, in the long term, but in the short term, I think you're going to find us working a lot more on the mobile client and. Uh, breakout rooms and closed captioning and other. In a pinch, I see I see people do very extensive things with the whiteboard, and I've also seen them just say, okay, you know what? I have a tablet and I have my paint program, or I have my mathematical program, and I just share that region of the screen, and that comes through into the recordings as well. But it's there on the roadmap for sure. Yes. Um, for uh, the uh, big blue button at the end plugin. Yeah. Uh, does it uh, support tracking of whether the student was on the recording, uh, or not the recording, but on the session or not? Like, didn't just go in and exit and didn't even see it? Yeah, so Jesus and I talked about this. So now that we've, we've really got pretty much all the features we want in just the, the core capability, now the next layer is analytics. Can we give you as the instructor feedback on did students attend, how long they attended, maybe what actions they did, did they ever respond to a poll? Because we have to figure that out because we have to be anonymous. We could say you respond to a poll, we never said what poll you can respond to. But you're going to see some more capabilities in the future where you'll actually be able to create a report. We're not going to try to create a grade from that, but we figure if we can give you a table of activity, maybe some score, the instructor can map that into some uh, percentage of participation, whatever they're giving in the class. Is that going to integrate into Moodle's uh, completion tracking? Um, not decided yet, but our goal is you can see to try to make really deep integrations with Moodle. So I think the first thing will be for us to get some type of report that you can view, and then we'll just look to deeply integrate that work into Moodle. Go, oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, how support for uh, doing all of this over HTTPS coming along? So we actually published on our website now the documentation on how to set up your server with HTTPS. Including audio and yeah. everything? The, the audio right now with WebRTC is actually uh, already secure. Uh, DTLS security, it's it's encrypted end-to-end. -end. It's docs.pigblubutton.org. That's got support materials for, I, I want to learn how to use something to have video, that sort of thing. It links to our Big Button website, so there are a number of videos up that essentially me sitting down next to you for four minutes just showing you how to use Big Button as a presenter. Um, and it's the same thing for as a student, and there's the same thing for setting up your audio. Over the years, I've hit just about every audio
possible problem, so I just said, that's it, I'm done. I just sat down and I took various uh, headphones and jacks and I filmed everything and I didn't leave the office until like 2.30 in the morning. You have to sometimes do these things in one shot. But I had the video I was looking for that said, if you have problems with the audio, check this one out. And then we saw a lot of audio issues drop after that. I, I'm not sure how much time I have left. Okay, I'm going to turn on mine and just see if there's some questions I can ask or answer on mine. You're 20 minutes late. <laughs> that, am I 20 minutes late? Oh my god, thank you for coming. <laughs> Sorry to 10 minutes.